What's up Fluffle Gang? How have you been? If you're new here, my name is Luffy and welcome to my channel. The boss's will is an elusive idea that drew many people into trying to achieve it. Zero set up systems to control information, Skullface wanted to eradicate language and unite people through communication via nukes and deterrence, and Big Boss created a nation of soldiers outside of politics. All of them missed the mark. Did anyone ever achieve the boss's will? Yes! Enter Snaven and Otacon, two people who never met the boss. How can two people who have never met the boss achieve her will? Let's go over this. Just a heads up, this video will have spoilers for Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker and Metal Gear Solid 4. What was the boss's will? Let's go over a quick refresher on the boss's will, and I'll have my video that breaks down what the boss's will is in more detail linked in the description below if you want something more in depth. The boss was raised by her father, who was a globalist and also one of the founding members of the Wiseman's Committee, a group of the most affluent and influential people from the US, China, and the USSR. The Wiseman's Committee formed following World War I with the plan to influence some of the world's leading superpowers to avoid a second world war. The boss's father modeled for the boss how important it was to take others' needs into account and to work towards the betterment of humanity, regardless of borders. Unfortunately, the Wiseman's Committee slowly disintegrated and the second generation of the Wiseman's Committee, the Philosophers, grew corrupt. But that's a story for another day. Years later, the boss had the opportunity to participate in the Mercury Project, which she jumped at. She was the first person to go to space, though you won't find that in your history books. And when she saw Earth for the first time from her shuttle, the overview effect shook her to the core. She remembered the lessons her father had taught her, and seeing the planet without borders reignited in her a desire to see the world united. Politics pitted her against the people she cared about, such as her lover and the father of her son, and her mentee, Naked Snake. Politics also dedicated she sacrificed her life and her reputation for her country. She never wanted to see anyone in the position she was in again. It's important to understand two things about the boss's will. One, that she wanted to see the world united regardless of borders, and two, for people to work towards the betterment of humanity while respecting one another. Uniting the world by erasing people's cultures or creating a nation state that you force people into isn't realizing the boss's will. Now that we have a better understanding of the boss's will, let's look at some key influences that shaped Otacon and Snaven. Otacon is the boss's spirit child. In 1961, Dr. Strangelove, Otacon's mom, met the boss. She quickly became infatuated with her and fell in love. Although they never dated, Dr. Strangelove admired the boss while they knew one another and long after their paths had separated and after the boss's death. When Dr. Strangelove had her son with Huey, she raised Otacon on the boss's ideals and we can see what Strangelove's understanding of the boss's ideals were by the way she spoke about her. The world's most empathetic mind weighed the past, the future, and the entire world and decided not to retaliate. Dr. Strangelove believed the boss to be the world's most empathetic mind, and so would have passed empathy onto Otacon. Otacon is definitely an empathetic person. In MGS1, Otacon believes Rex's purpose was strictly defensive, designed to shoot down nuclear missiles. When he learns about Rex's true purpose, he's immediately against it and helps the operative sent in to stop it, and then dedicates the rest of his life to preventing more Metal Gears from being created. He likes Sniper Wolf and appreciates how she cares for the wolf dogs on the island. He even asks Snavid not to kill her, despite the terrible things she's been involved in. He's tortured by the damage his family has done to the world with their contribution to their work on Metal Gears and in the Manhattan Project. In fact, he over-empathizes and blames himself for things that aren't his fault. In MGS2, he blames himself for E.E.'s breast with death when it was his father who tried to drown her. He pushes Snavid to do good in the world. Snavid would rather retire to Alaska with his 50 dogs. He encourages Snavid to be kinder to Sunny and indulges her cooking, even though it's terrible. Most of all, Otacon empathizes with his partner, Snavid, and tells Sunny at the end of MGS4 that Snakes had a hard life and needed some time to rest. So, what you're saying is, we don't need deterrence to have peace? I didn't say that. What's important is that we wish for peace. Survival requires pragmatic thought and action. But you must still retain your ideals. This really sums up Otacon. Pragmatic thought and action while holding on to his ideals. He wanted to right the wrongs of his family and make the world a safer place without Metal Gears, but also didn't want to get caught up in a show of force for deterrence like Bibi did. Otacon was raised with the boss's empathy and pragmatic mind. Snavid, the exhausted soldier. What about Snavid though? Before he met Otacon in MGS1, he was retired in Alaska. He was a dog sledder with 50 huskies and busied himself with taking care of his dog family and training for the Iditarod. Despite having served under Big Boss, Big Boss's need for control and to lead never rubbed off on Snavid. He never wanted to be a legendary soldier and didn't think of himself as a hero. Without Otacon, he would have probably gone back to his cabin in Alaska after the events of MGS1. What were Snavid's and Otacon's goals? How did they hold up against the boss's will? 
Snaven didn't retire after MGS1, though. Instead, he founded Philanthropy with Otacon, an anti-Metal Gear, non-governmental organization. Philanthropy formed in response to the overabundance of Metal Gears after Ocelot sold the Metal Gear Rex test data on the black market. Thanks, Ocelot. Philanthropy uncovered info on the development of Metal Gears and destroyed them or exposed them by gathering evidence of their existence and leaking it to the appropriate channels, like how they did with Ray. After the Big Shell incident, Snaven and Otacon switched their attention from anti-Metal Gear activities to anti-Patriot activities. The Patriots posed a bigger threat to the world than any Metal Gear as they worked to control the world through their systems. Throughout Snaven's career, he never tries to take over the world or influence the world toward his personal views, or the views he's adopted from a dead mentor or slash friend. Otacon doesn't design weapons for villains looking to replace the world's language with the language of nukes. Both reject the mistakes of their fathers. More than that, by the end of MGS2, we see that Snake and Otacon's personal philosophies have come to fully embody the philosophy of the boss. The speech that Snaven gives to Raiden at the end of the game is one that you can easily imagine the boss giving herself, as Snaven attempts to impart his beliefs to a deeply shaken Raiden. He tells Raiden, who was struggling with his own identity and legacy after being manipulated by the Patriots, that he is still capable of defining himself. He owns his own emotions and actions and can start over whenever he wants to. To. I know you didn't have much in terms of choices this time, but everything you felt, thought about during this mission is yours, and what you decide to do with them is your choice. Snake reassures Raiden that he is not defined by the way that he has been manipulated by the times, and that he owns his own actions. In the same way, the boss makes the personal choice to see her mission through, despite being manipulated. She understands the importance of personal choice, and that her actions and emotions ultimately will always belong to her. What she felt and what she did during her final mission and during her life are the things that she tries the hardest to pass on to Vivi with her own speeches at the end of MGS3. Her legacy is not one of being manipulated or of a legendary soldier, but of a woman who was fighting as hard as she could and who was an individual with thoughts and feelings of her own. Snake also tells Raiden that, Earth may not be forever, but we still have the responsibility to leave what traces of life we can. Building the future and keeping the past alive are one and the same thing. And that, We can tell other people about having faith. What we had faith in what we found important enough to fight for. It's not whether you are right or wrong, but how much faith you were willing to have that decides the future. He completely gets it. What the boss desired most in the world was for individuals to have respect for one another and for everyone to fight for what they personally believe in and pass it on to make a better future for all of humanity. Snake and Otacon are individuals who have faith in a collective future and are willing to fight with everything they can for the things they believe in. They fight in a way that is wholly their own and that stays true to their values and isn't bound to the laws or beliefs in any one government. They decide who they are for themselves and act to pass on the legacy of the past on to future generations. They have faith in the future without denying the messiness of the past. In all of the Patriots' manipulations in MGS2, Solid Snake and Otacon are the one thing that the Patriots could not account for. And though the Patriots' plan might more or less succeed in the end, Snake and Otacon are the grit in the cogs of their machine, believing the whole way in the individual's right to make their own choices. This is how Snaven and Otacon achieve the boss's will. They work to right their mistakes by taking out Metal Gears and exposing the organizations involved in Metal Gear affairs, then moved on to make the world a safer place by destroying Zero's AIs. They didn't decide they knew how to unite the world under their leadership and then try to take control of the world. They respected the will of others, while never compromising on their own beliefs. They fully embodied the boss's philosophy and her will. Snaven and Otacon were the only people ever to achieve the boss's will, mainly by not trying to achieve it in the first place. Neither of them were in their line of work for the glory, and Snaven, in fact, preferred not to be referred to as a hero at all. Snaven and Otacon only wanted to right their wrongs and make the world a safer place by destroying Metal Gears and the Patriots. They didn't even know of the boss or of her will, but nevertheless, they understood what she meant and felt the same way. And I think that concludes our series on the boss's will. Who came closest to achieving the boss's will? Snaven and Otacon? Maybe BB? Skullface? No, it was Steven and Otacon. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. Special thanks to my best bro. I was really drowning this week and she really, really helped me write a portion of this script. And I just, I can't thank her enough. So thank you so, so much for contributing. Thank you so, so much for helping me. And I hope y'all enjoy her contributions to this script. Please subscribe. We're so close to a thousand subscribers. Turn on notifications. Join us in Discord. We're talking about MGS constantly. More importantly, please take care of yourselves, and I will see you all in the next one. Thank you.